how can we merge a CG model with a real life footage? One way to do that is by sacrificing your fusion card, but for the common man, who don't have this rare item, I will show you today how we can merge 3D models with footage in an easy way using motion tracking in Blender. Before we jump into the work, we need some raw materials to work with, the footage we need to use can be found online, and I included the one I used down in the description, though you can look online for any aerial landscape or city view footage. We also need a fit 3D model to merge it with the shot, and the one showing on the screen is available on this site, so check the link down below if you want the same model. Back to Blender, the area where the work happens is the motion tracking, so from the top plus icon, go to the VFX tab, and open a motion tracking workspace. Down in the big empty area, hit open to import a video or an image sequence to work with, couple of things we need to check before we start, one is the colors, since Blender have a filmic mode by default in the color management, we need to set it back to standard, to get the original colors for this footage. Another thing we need to match is the frame rate on both the Blender file with the clip, so if you open the properties on the video file, you will find there the frame rate for this video and you can after that set the frame rate in Blender to match the video, in my case it's 23.98. Now to the work, and it will happen on the left panel, so in the track menu on the left, we can hit the top button to make the scene frame number match the same number in the footage, and you can see if I press this button it will change the frames from 250 to 360 to match the video. If we played the video, we can see the footage loading in the memory, to make Blender save this process and not do it again, you should hit prefetch, and it will load the entire scene. If the prefetch didn't load the entire clip in one go, then you should check the memory limits in the system setting, it happened to me and I had the cache on 4000, so I increased it to 8k to fix it. Next step is adding points on the clip called markers, to track the clip camera, and we have this nice button called detect feature, this will add markers for you based on contrast or something like that, it's a lot easier than adding it yourself, but before you press it, change this motion slider to a fine, and put the correlation value on 0.9, it's all for a better solving later, and we will see that in a minute. Once you're done with the setting, make sure you're at the start of the clip, and press the detect features button. A number of yellow markers will show up, after that, to track those markers along the clip, hit the track forward button. Once it's done. You should be at the end of the clip, so press the detect features again, this will add more markers to the clip, and we can now track them backward, so press the track backward button and sit there and wait. If we looked at the tracking graph, or whatever you call it, you will find some tracks going up and down outside the rhythm, and this can cause a big error in the shot, so one way to delete that is manually, by selecting any ones that seems off, and press X to delete them, but this can cause you sometimes to select good tracks along with the bad ones, which can ruin the camera track at the end, so to skip the manual thing, we can use the filter track option in the solve cleanup tab, this will give you a threshold to control the selection of tracks and filter the bad ones or the ones that goes off the line. By default it's set on 5 and you can see down it says identify 4 problematic tracks, if we decrease the threshold, more tracks will be added, so keep it on default and it should give you a good result, which in our case 4 tracks, and we can hit X to delete them.
to solve the camera motion, we have this big button, and before you press it check those three options, the key frame, the focal length, and the optical center, once you do that, you can press solve camera motion, the solving might take a minute or two, and when it's done, a number on the right area under the cube will appear, it's the error in matching the footage with the scene. The solve error in general, if it's under 1 is ok, under 0.5 is good, and the best is around 0.1, so we're good, the error in my case is 0.37, and you can filter it down more by again using the filter tracks then repeat the solve process. There's also an add-on that's shipped with Blender called Refine Tracks, this also can help set a limit for this error, for me I'm happy with this, so let's keep going. We can now add a tracking camera to our scene based on the footage, and it's with this Set Tracking Scene button. Once you press it, you should go back to the layout and open the motion tracking in the overlays, if your markers spread in a horizontal way like this, then it is probably fine, however, if they show up vertically, you might have done something wrong along the way. After setting up the camera, we need to set the floor orientation, to get that we need three points from the same level in the area you want to place your model, so I will select three markers, then hit the floor button. If the floor button gives you an error, it's mainly in my case when I delete tracks manually, there might be other reasons for sure so just keep it in mind, our work in this motion tracking area, is done, what we need now is to match the scale of the cube, or the model, which we will change in a minute, along with the floor to the footage on the screen, so head back to the layout, go to the camera, first make sure the clip is smooth. Then you can select the mesh in your scene and scale them around to fit the shot. You can now after deleting the cube, and maybe hide the plane for a bit, import any model you want to place here, importing models can be done using append or the import menu or any other way that suits you, I will simply copy it from its file, and paste it in the foreground collection. Let's match the model with our shot, the animation is not looping to the end and we will fix that later. To match the lights on the model with the shot, I need you first to switch to every render view, and make sure to enable transparency in the film tab, then enable all the default settings you see me checking on. For the light, I have this default point lamp, so I will switch it to a sun, give it around 10 or 20 strength value, and maybe a warm color for this shot, the color depend on what you're working with, then directed it based on the shot shadows. If you see here, this car shadows going toward the left, so make the sun points in the same way, then we can play with its horizontal rotation to extend the shadow, but first we need a shadow catcher, a mesh to keep hidden but still receives fallen shadows from the model, for that we have the ground plane, and to make it a shadow catcher we need a simple node set, so add a new material to it.
We're gonna mix a diffuse with a transparency node. In the mix factor, I will copy the same diffuse, then connect it to the factor, and to make it work we need the shader to RBG node, along with a color ramp, so set it up as you see on screen. We also need the blend mode to be on alpha blend, not alpha clip don't mix those, then we can move the white side on the ramp toward the black, and make the diffuse in the mix on a black color, this will leave only the black area which is the shadows on this plane. You can after that control the sun intensity and direction to cast more clear shadow, You also need to check if the model hovering over the ground. If you want to add more contrast to the shadows, you can simply copy the ground plane in the same place, but I think this for me is enough. One last thing to fix is the animation looping to the end of the clip, to do that, select the armature, and switch the timeline or any other work area to a non-linear animation, with this we can hit this icon to make all the keyframes into one piece, then with the action clip tab, increase the repeat value to include the entire shot. And that's the basic of motion tracking, you can now increase the opacity of the background to view the final scene, then maybe do couple of frame renders to make sure everything is fine before rendering animation. Once you're done, you can set a folder for your PNG sequence and hit render animation, and that's it for today, remember to like the video if you're still here, and see you guys next time, stay sharp, goodbye.